Okay, in part one we did the background, some of Haidt's early research, and we arrived at his five moral foundations, to harm, care, fairness, reciprocity, in-group loyalty, authority, respect, purity, sanctity. We were saying he, he was using anthropology research to come up with these five, but he was also using uh, research in evolutionary biology. And in the next slide here, we'll see a chart here that kind of captures his thinking about this. So each of these five foundations, he argues, it has an evolutionary history. So here are the five foundations at the top, and here he has the adaptive challenge of our ancestors that, you know, they had to, to solve some kind of social problem, and so the natural selection would be favoring brains that were concerned about um, the situation or the solution to some social problem. The proper domain, um, this is the actual sort of uh, uh, situation in the past that would have uh, uh, produced a concern for these five foundations. The uh, the actual domain, the set of all triggers, so here we're going to skip this. This is uh, the point here is, is that today's modern society is a little different than our ancestral uh, situation. And so we may be, we may have these five foundations activated by things in our society that were different from uh, our ancestors. The characteristics, emo uh, emotions associated with each of the five foundations and the relevant virtues and vices associated with each of the five foundations. So let's take a look at uh, harm and care, for example. Well, what was the adaptive challenge for our ancestors? Here the idea is that for, for, for thousands and thousands of generations going back to our mammalian ancestry, there was a concern to protect and care for the young the vulnerable or the or injured kin right so this issue of harm and care is something that we humans of course share with many 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 animals and so we should expect and he expects that it would be sort of built into our our uh, our our nervous system our brains now for the harm care foundation what was the proper domain that is what what would be triggering this concern for harm and care well if we see suffering right or distress from maybe our, our, our offspring or our family member or our kin or a friend or something. So that type of thing is going to activate the harm care concern. The characteristic emotions, compassion. So compassion is the, the emotion that captures this foundation. The virtues, caring, kindness, the vices would be cruelty. So uh, uh, caring and kindness are the, the virtues that we would associate with the harm care foundation. Cruelty would be the vice. Fairness, recipro reciprocity, what would be the adaptive challenge? In other words, what was the challenge in our ancestral uh, uh, environment? Um, to reap the benefits of, of these cooperations, the, the dyadic cooperation with non-kin. In other words, uh, being able to uh, effectively and beneficially, mutually benefit from cooperation with non-kin, right? So we've got things like the golden rule are going to help us... Uh, uh, navigate the social world and and to cooperate well so this is the fairness reciprocity foundation what's the proper domain what's going to trigger it well cheating if we see cheaters that's going to activate our concern for fairness uh, uh, cooperation of course is going to you know when we when we uh, are cooperating we have to make sure that we're doing so in a fair way and that we return the favor if somebody does something for us we return the favor deception is going to be uh, related activating this uh, this concern this moral foundation what emotions are characteristic anger gratitude guilt anger if somebody uh, takes advantage of us we show anger and right that signals that we've been violated the norms of, uh, of fair uh, exchange have been violated gratitude if somebody does something for us we feel gratitude and that's going to make us more likely to return the favor in the future right the reciprocity uh, guilt if we do something bad uh, then we feel like we want to uh, make amends we want to pay for our uh, bad behavior again uh, activating or, or related to the uh, the domain of fairness reciprocity what are the virtues fairness justice honesty trustworthiness the vices dishonesty right in group loyalty the adaptive challenge again what our ancestors faced well well reaping the benefits of group cooperation right so not only for the fairness reciprocity this is just sort of uh, ourselves interacting with other non-kin in our own group but of course in our evolutionary past we were members of groups who might have been in competition with other groups and so um, 
uh, group cooperation was important. If you were going to war, for example, or you had to compete with some other group, then uh, the in-group and loyalty domain is going to be relevant. The proper domain, in other words, what were the triggers that would uh, activate this concern, threat, or challenge to the group? Could be an economic challenge or a military challenge or so on. Um, the characteristic emotions, group pride, belongingness, rage at traitors, etc. These things are the emotions that are associated with this foundation for in-group loyalty. And the virtues, loyalty, patriotism, self-sacrifice, those all sort of promote the group and uh, demonstrate loyalty to the group. And of course the vices, treason, cowardice, where we're not, we're going against our own group or we're not helping our group. For the Authority Respect Foundation, the adaptive challenge to negotiate hierarchy, um, to defer to others in positions of power and status in a selective manner. So this is sort of how to get along in a hierarchy, right? So that's going to be the challenge that our ancestors would have faced. Um, the proper uh, domain, the adaptive trigger, what's going to trigger it, signs of dominance and submission. So. So we are going to be reading the status positions of people in our society, and we have to understand who is in the dominant position, who's in the submissive position. Are we in a dominant position? Are we in a submissive position? And we have to be mindful of that, right? And, we'll, and that, that's going to help us negotiate our complex social hierarchy. Um, characteristic emotions, respect. So we're going to respect you know, other members who are higher up in status or power or authority. We might fear them, etc. That's kind of upward looking, right? The, these two emotions, respect and fear. Uh, these emotions be, be triggered when we are sort of looking up in the status hierarchy at those above us in power, status, privilege, etc. The relevant virtues, uh, obedience, deference, vices would be disobedience, uppityness, right? Purity, sanctity, the fifth foundation, uh, the adaptive challenge. Again, our ancestors would have fa faced the problem of avoiding microbes and parasites, right? So um, uh, this, of course, uh, can threaten health. The um, proper domain, the, the triggers, well, waste products, uh, diseased people, right? These things are possible threats to uh, our, our, the integrity of our body, our health. Um, the characteristics, emotions would be discussed. So, and this is, is what researchers have found, that we often are disgusted by precisely those things that are potential threats to our body, uh, but also our soul as uh, was made clear in some of the anthropology research. The relevant virtues, temperance, chastity, piety, cleanliness. Right? These would be virtues in the domain of purity and sanctity. Um, uh, and the vices would be lust, intemperance. Right? Uh, and so again, then these five foundations, Jonathan Haidt argues, have an evolutionary history. And so uh, the origin of these foundations can be traced back to uh, the anthropology literature. Uh, what do people around the world sort of care about? What, what do they f uh, find moral? You know, what do they elevate to the importance of moral status? Um, and, and which ones and, and which concerns have a plausible evolutionary history that we can then also study from the biological point of view. These emotions are biological expressions built into our, our, uh, our nervous system, our brains, and that are serving some function. And uh, Haidt has now mapped these, these domains where we uh, moralize issues in our society to some of the biological equipment that we use to uh, to get along in groups in our societies. So for for height, the five foundations um, uh, can be found throughout the world in cultures all over the world and they are rooted in our evolutionary history. Now to, to proceed with his research then, he had to come up with ways of measuring uh, um, these foundations and this is the survey work then. So here's the typical survey, the moral foundation survey and it's composed of these items here and these items are, uh, are related to the five foundations and what he wants people to do is to simply indicate whether they, they agree or disagree that this 
item is a uh, of a moral concern right so for example compassion for those who are suffering is the most critical or the most crucial virtue now people are asked to judge whether this is something that is uh, of moral concern so whether they disagree or agree now notice that particular issue concern with suffering is in the harm uh, care foundation here's an item here when the government makes laws the number one principle uh, should be ensuring that everyone is treated fairly obviously in the fairness domain that would be an example from the fairness foundation and again people are are indicating whether they think that these are considerations uh, of a moral nature um, I am proud of my country's history right a loyalty uh, item respect for authority is something all children need to learn authority item um, it is better to, uh, let's see whoops no nope. we're gonna take this here and we're going to put it up put it up here here's a purity item people should not do things that are disgusting even if no one is harmed uh, again if we think that this is a matter of, of morality then we are uh, endorsing uh, a, a purity foundation and you'll see the rest of these here can be categorized into the five foundations as well. Take a look at this one. It's better to do good than bad. That's one of these items that the researchers often put in a survey just to make sure people pay paying attention. They're using the scales properly, etc. So what Height did was he he uh, he constructed surveys like this, and there are different versions of the survey, um, but they all have items that can be categorized into the five foundations. And he wanted to see whether people would. Uh, indicate that these items are of moral concern and this allowed him then to measure uh, whether people are endorsing all five of the foundations or some subset of the foundations he already suspected from his early research that uh, there's cultural variability in what people think is moral and there's also class variability in uh, these moral concerns now here we can make the connection to the uh, political differences between conservatives and liberals. So this is um, a graph showing uh, the results of using that moral foundation survey with people who differ in their political uh, orientation. Very liberal on the left, very conservative on the right. Here are the five foundations, harm, fairness, in-group, authority, purity. And as you can see, the data here has a certain pattern to it. If we take very liberal individuals, they endorse the two foundations, harm and fairness. They are likely to say uh, items that are relating to harm and fairness are of significant moral concern. They are moral issues, anything related to harm and fairness. Whereas the items that were relating to in-group authority purity uh, were judged to be less uh, of a moral concern right um, and so there's a clear pattern in the liberal response liberals tend to endorse two of the foundations much more than the other three they're more likely to judge uh, behaviors related to harm and fairness as moral within the moral domain and those uh, behaviors related to in-group authority purity as not as uh, as uh, uh, as moral in other words they don't uh, judge them to be issues that are uh, are of moral concern as much as the other two foundations now notice what happens for people who are more conservative right the uh, the three foundations there's a increase positive trend here negative slope there so for the very conservative individual they are judging all five of those categories of items as being moral issues right yes the conservatives uh, uh, don't find the harm and fairness items as moral as the the liberals uh, but they find the other three in group authority purity uh, more moral than the liberals right so from this research Height argued that uh, using an analogy with a stereo equalizer, it's as if conservatives have a five channel morality where all five uh, domains here are moral concerns, whereas liberals have a two channel morality, favoring harm and fairness above the other three domains.